There's a new guy on the block in sinus surgery that we're hearing about. We know in the heart that we can do, we can put little balloon angioplasty uh, and open up coronary arteries. Is there a type of plasty uh, balloon surgery we do in the sinuses now? I've heard about it. Yeah, there is. It's a real hot topic right now and uh, one that I think stands to really help us in our armamentarium of tools that we have when we operate on people who have sinus problems. Uh, the balloons, I actually brought some devices that we'll look at in just a minute if you'd like to. Sure. Uh, but I think the balloons are uh, fantastic. They're specifically good in people who have frontal sinus disease. That's an area where it was hard for us to get into in the past because it's so far up that our lights and our cameras don't allow us visual access as well as the places that are directly back in the nose. And so now we can put a balloon into the frontal sinus with a little light on the end of it. We can confirm that we're in the right spot and we can dilate up the drainage pathway of that balloon and back out with minimal trauma. Does it stay open? That's the question. That's, that's the million dollar question. Uh, there are studies that show that balloon sinuplasty works out to two years where people have been looked at to say, is the opening, the ostea, still there and patent and open at two years? And the answer is yes, at 24 months. The question is, will it stay open? And we've done this experiment in cardiology and, and in cardiology we, we began to realize that you have to put stents in some people because it will narrow over time. Sinus disease clearly is not as deadly as a, a coronary vessel closing down and if somebody could have a little office-based procedure with a balloon that they wouldn't have any downtime from work it would take them 20 or 30 minutes to do it and they could get right back that same day it may be perfect for them let's look at your balloon uh, you bought a sample here it's a, uh, a sample let's see if we can uh, show how we can do that on the show here i've got a light here it's nice and warm is it still working it's still on yeah uh, Okay, so there's a light at the end right there, uh, the battery, and this is what? This is a syringe. And it's filled with saline that will inflate the balloon on the end of this cannula. So this device gets inserted into the nose, and the tip will go into the sinus cavity of entrance, interest. <laughs> this actually is uh, bent to go in the maxillary sinus, so it has a little bit of a sharper bend. Um, and as it's introduced into the maxillary sinus, uh -huh. then the balloon can be advanced over the catheter like that. And then I squeeze, ah, look at that. So it opens up, so it, it opens up then the sinus ostea that you're there to try and reestablish. Uh, how long do you leave it open? Five or 10 seconds and do it a couple of times. And this is a seven millimeter balloon, so it, it will take an ostea that may be one millimeter almost blocked and dilate it up to seven millimeters, which is a huge improvement. When you withdraw, after you've dilated to seven millimeters, will it stay at seven millimeters or go down to six or five or two or three or one? That's the question. We know it stays open. Uh, there's not data to say three, five, and seven millimeters, but the clinical improvement is obvious in patients that have uh, frontal sinus disease, or this tool is excellent for patients, I think, who have recurring maxillary sinus infections where when we do a CT scan, we may not see a lot of soft tissue swelling or evidence of a chronic infection like we do in our patients that have traditional functional endoscopic sinus surgery. But the patient can tell you, Doc, I'm sick all the time. I'm missing work. I'm requiring antibiotics on a regular basis. And every time I take an antibiotic, I get better. You and I get an x-ray. The x-ray looks normal. Well, this may be a great device for that person. Just open up the ostea enough that they can't develop swelling that will occlude the sinus opening. So this new guy on the block, is it going to be around here five years from now? I think so. I think balloons are here to stay. The real challenge for us uh, as physicians, um, every time a new surgical tool comes around, is to decide what is the appropriate place to utilize this? Where does it best benefit our patients so that they get a long-term uh, recovery and improvement with the minimum amount of invasiveness?